When we talk about athletes moving from one brand to another, the usual names are in the mix. You know, Nike, Jordan, Adidas, Under Armour. Well, not today, people, because today we're talking about Reebok, which is now owned by Adidas, but back when they signed Shaq in 1992, they weren't. And Walmart. Yes, Walmart. First of all, y'all sleep when it comes to the rare shoes for sale on Walmart's website. I mean, look at that right there. But aside from that, Walmart has been busy selling over 120 million pairs of affordable Shaq shoes. That number was from 2016. So why did Shaq leave Reebok and end up partnering with Walmart in the first place? This is Topic Tackle. Let's go. What's good people, JC3 here, and you're watching Topic Tackle. If you want to support my channel, leave a thumbs up on this video, and if you want to take your support a step further, you can check out the official merch available below this video. I appreciate y'all, and let's get going. The best place to begin is with Shaq's deal with Reebok in 1992. Now, according to O'Neal, Nike offered him a contract, but the deal did not include a signature shoe. Nike had also just signed Alonzo Mourning, which proved to be a roadblock in getting Shaq what he wanted. Reebok, on the other hand, offered Shaq a signature shoe from the jump and inked him to a six-year deal. The Reebok Shaq line produced some iconic silhouettes, such as the Shaq Attack, which released four different models from 1992 to 95. The Shaq Attack 1 featured Reebok's well-known pump technology that allowed for customized fit and feel, a graphite midfoot shank, which made it the first shoe to feature carbon fiber, not the Jordan 11, which often gets credited for this, and the Shaq Dunkman logo on the heel. The Shaq Attack 3 and 4 featured Insta-Pump technology. It's a modified pump system, which utilized an independent pump gun armed with a CO2 cartridge for fast and easy inflation. After the Shaq Attack 4, Reebok released the Shaq Gnosis in 1995, featuring a new buck and leather upper with hexalite cushioning in the heel and forefoot. The Shaq Attack line has seen many models re-released as retro since Shaq rejoined the brand in 2013. So that leads us to the question, why did Shaq leave in the first place? While O'Neal was experiencing success with Reebok, his shoes were retailing around the $100 price point and up. And this was called out by a single mother who cursed out Shaq as he was leaving the Magic Arena. Shaq tried to defuse the situation by saying that he wasn't the one who set the price and he offered the woman $2,000 to buy whatever shoe she wanted for her kids. She slapped the money out of his hands, proclaimed that someone needed to make an affordable shoe. It was at this moment that he knew. She was right. He remembered back to when he was coming up and how asking his father for $100 to buy a pair of shoes simply wasn't an option. According to Soul Collector, this encounter led Shaq to approach Reebok and see if there was a way to work into around his existing contract. He said, me and Reebok had a brief discussion and they allowed me to do my own thing downstairs as well as upstairs. So O'Neal Neil launched shoes under two brands that he owns, Shaq and Dunkman. He would eventually leave his Reebok deal in 1998, but his Shaq and Dunkman brands partnered with Walmart to provide affordable footwear for families around the world. In 2004, Shaq partnered with Payless where his Dunkman sneakers were sold for under $40. Shaq now says that he sold over 200 million pairs of shoes since 1995 in an interview in May of 2020 with All Urban Central. It's beyond safe to say that Shaq has followed through on his father's advice to have something to fall back on after basketball to avoid becoming one of the near 70% of players who go broke in retirement. Now, when it comes to the aesthetics, Shaq sneakers have been criticized for ripping off multiple designs from name brands over the years. I mean, hey, anyone interested in these Cement 3s for $34.99? O'Neal has admitted that no one is going to beat MJ, but said, and I quote, you know how it is on the block. If you can't beat them, you can be next to him though. He made sure his Reeboks were next to the Jordans in Foot Locker and he still is trying to come as close to Jordan's designs as possible with his own brands. Soul Collector has a great article that features the most flagrant Shaq sneaker knockoff. So if you want a good laugh, I highly advise you to check it out. The link's in the description. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you ever had a pair of Shaq shoes? We'll be back with more Topic Tackle coming soon. Stay solid, people.